In every life, fate sometimes deals a hand. To each of us, fate sometimes calls the turn. Life, hope, peril, and death may well depend upon a random turn of ironic fate that decides dilemma. This is a story not for children or the faint of heart, for this is a story of treachery and violence and cruelty because of the girl who knew too much. established in earlier experiments, it now seems certain that low oxygenation formulae are not contraindicated. Am I going too fast for you, Miss Toynbee? No, Mr. Williams. Darn it. What's that? Nothing. Paragraph. In conformance with our standard security procedures, I am not committing this most recent equation to paper, but I shall transmit it to one other trusted employee who will rigidly observe all rules governing restricted materials. That's all, I guess. Twelve copies to the usual channels. Miss Toynbee, you've been with us for some months now, haven't you? Yes, sir, six. And by now you are fully aware of the necessity for absolute secrecy regarding some of the work we have been doing. Of course. There are people, Miss Toynbee, who would very much like to know what I... How is your memory? Pretty good. Your birthday is June the 22nd, mine's May the 6th, and... Please, Miss Toynbee, this is serious. I want you to memorize what I'm putting down on this piece of paper. Got it? That is the equation to which I referred in my memo. If anything should happen to me, repeat that equation only to the head of the laboratory, and never under any circumstances any circumstances to anyone else. Do you understand? I understand, Mr. Williams. You'll burn your hand. <laughs> Don't worry. This is proof of an elementary physical law, Miss Toynbee. In a fire with a great deal of oxygen mixed in, like this one, bare human flesh is unharmed, whereas any other substance, such as paper or cloth, instantly bursts into flame. You're wonderful, Mr. Williams. I'm finally through. Yeah, I'll be home in about 15 minutes. Oh, that's okay. I'll heat up something. Hmm? Oh, honey, for him, I'd work all night, every night from now to eternity. Okay, I'll see you in a few minutes. I'll take the shortcut. Bye. <laughs> Be still. I... Very good, Guvik. Now, Miss Toynbee. Who are you? What? Mr. Ringo. You are surprised to see one of your colleagues, Miss Toynbee? Don't be. Mr. Ringo has deluded many people far more astute than you. He is one of my most valuable aides, as well as being a brilliant chemist. I don't understand. Who are you? What do you want? 
I am called many names, Miss Toynbee. What I want is very simple. I'm sure you know what it is. I don't know what you're talking about. The short but extremely valuable equation which your Mr. Williams wrote down on a piece of paper today and asked you to memorize. What? What piece of paper? Please, Miss Toynbee. This situation is already far too melodramatic for my liking. I take part in it only because we cannot waste time either cajoling or reasoning. I warn you now, I am quite prepared to go to any lengths to force you to tell me the equation you have memorized. Well, that's ridiculous. This whole thing is ridiculous. You've been reading too many Mickey Spillane novels. I don't even know what an equation is. Kubik. <laughs> far enough. I tell you, I don't know anything. Help! Listen to me. I, I'm just his secretary. I, well, help! Surely, Miss Toynbee, you are intelligent enough to realize that screaming won't solve your problem. In the traditional fashion of all villains, we have made quite certain that you cannot be heard outside of this room. We are not fooling, Miss Toynbee. We need that little equation to complete our own work. The equation you memorized. What is it? I, I don't remember. Gubik, perhaps uh, we can help you remember. The equation, Miss Toynbee? No. You little fool. Tell you, Vanikoff, it must be wrong. This is a highly oxygenated catalyst. If we add that to what we've already got, it'll explode. We'll be burned to a crisp. Now I know why Williams has succeeded where you failed, Ringo. Get on with it. Maybe she lied to us. Maybe she made up this equation. Idiot. That, that stenographer? Surely she realizes she's more vulnerable at the moment than we. Get to work. Look a fright, Mr. Williams. You're beautiful. But I still don't understand how you knew enough about chemistry to change that formula the way you did. Oh, I don't really. 
I just remembered what you said when you put your hand through the flame in the office. You said, well, in a fire with a lot of oxygen mixed in, bare human flesh is left unharmed. I, that is, you see, they had clothes on, so when I told them the equation, I just doubled the dosage. O12 instead of O6. It's funny, the only thing I ever could remember about chemistry in school was that O stood for oxygen. Well, you sure burned them up, smart girl. Beauty plus brains, eh? Yes, indeed. And that's a formula I must really study intensely in the future. Right, Miss Toanby? Oh, you're so right, Mr. Williams. Mm -hmm.